Good afternoon, Year 5, and welcome to your DR this week. This week, our new strategy is going to be inference. So what is inference? Inference is when we use clues from the text and our prior knowledge to work something out that the author doesn't tell us. This is often based on clues about a character, a setting or a mood. So what makes a good inference? A good inference is made when we justify our answers using evidence from the text. And for example, I know this because we think from the writer's point of view, using detail, closely quoting the exact quote or phrase to build on our answer, and finding more than one piece of evidence. Okay, so let's get started. Today, you will need your full belly, as you should have had lunch already, an active brain, a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, or the document on J2E. So this week we will be continuing with the text of Beowulf by Michael Mapergo, whilst practicing our infant skills. So far we have read up to page 17 on J2E. Now quickly write down a recap of the story so far, there must be at least three things you already know about the story. Okay, so let's look at our vocabulary for the, today. Our first word is Thanes. This is repeated from last week. A Thane is a man who held land granted by a king or a military nobleman. Lingering. To remain or stay on in a place longer than is usual or expected, and sea serpents, a legendary sea monster resembling a dragon or a large snake. Okay, so today, for our talk aloud and talk partner, think aloud and talk partners, we want you to write down some of the answers that we would normally talk to you about. So let's start with the first text. All their long lingering sorrow was banished as Hogarth and his thanes listened to Beowulf, Beowulf's brave words. And looking upon him, no one there doubted for a moment that Beowulf could achieve or would achieve all he promised. I have heard, Beowulf went on, that Grendel never carries a weapon, no war axe, no sword on his murderous missions. Look at the phrase murderous missions. Why do you think the author has used this phrase? I shall go up against this beast bareheaded, just as I fought the giants and the sea serpents. With my bare hands I shall grapple with this foul fiend and fight him to the death. If we know the Beowulf, is going to carry no weapon when he is going up against Grendel, then what do we think bareheaded must mean? Use evidence from the text to support your answers and please make sure that you, you, you are using the sentence stems. Okay, so let's test those inference skills. Today, your inference selfie is no one there doubted for a moment that Beowulf could achieve and would achieve all he promised. Using evidence from the text, what did Beowulf promise the King of the Danes? Number two, how did the Danes know to trust Beowulf in this moment? What evidence is there? You will need to reread pages 17 and 18.